What were the actions required? And what did the what was the employee feedback like? So Kat, can we start with what was in Chubb Chubb in need of? Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> um, look, I started in Chubb in January this year as the head of HR for Australia and New, New Zealand. Uh, Chubb Insured is uh, 30,000 globally employee base. Uh, here in Australia, we have around 800 and in New Zealand, we have about 80. And when I started, we really started to look at what our wellbeing strategy was uh, and leveraging obviously what we look at from a global perspective. The strategy is very much around building a happy and healthy workforce. And when we started to look at what's the strategy for this year, we were working with our employee advocate group who had actually watched you, Michelle, um, have a session last year. Uh, you were a keynote and you were really looking at nutrition and the benefits of nutrition for immunity and sustained performance. So in the current environment, fast paced regulatory environment, we started to look at, well, how can we augment what we currently have and provide that support to our employees? So in the middle of talking to you about that, at the same time, COVID occurred. So mm -hmm. at that moment, we thought, you know what, we have to really accelerate this because clearly immunity is, is key in this environment. But more than that, we had our employee workforce that was going to work from home. And then they had their partners, their children, everyone under the same roof and operating in a very new environment. So we felt that a key strategy needed to focus on how do we support our employees, both psychologically and physically, to really think through how we can build that immunity and resilience through this environment. And, and that's really where we accelerated this um, and worked with you on it. You sure did, Kat. I mean, within eight weeks, we rolled out a three webinar series um, that was about immunity, mental well-being, motivation, sleep, mental resilience, also about gut, brain, and um, high performance mind function. So in three weeks, uh, we were able to roll that out with really amazing feedback. And Within that time, we kept your employees also within a closed um, group where we shared all these upbeat, positive, and I think it was Geraldine who said earlier, um, bits of sunshine, right? So we had a forum, we still have the forum running, where we share podcasts, recipes, sleep tips, all these wonderful things, again, just to put the net underneath these employees. So not just talk about how sleep is important, how energy is important, but actually how the doing of it and how we can do this in small, tiny micro habits. And um, Kat, there was something else that I love that Chubb did um, as well for your employees. And I'll let you expand on that. Yeah, Michelle, we were really thinking around the moments and, and how we looked at a strategy that looked at not just, you know, the, the move to, to working from home, but a, a number of calendar months and, and what that looked like, not knowing when and how COVID would start to evolve. So what we looked at is, first of all, your webinars, and we launched those to our people because not only was it around wellbeing, nutrition, immunity and mood, it was also around connection. So it was an opportunity, as you said, there was a forum and it was an opportunity to bring our people together and you know figuring out moments to connect our workforce so we did that but then at the same time we considered um, June being our busiest month uh, of the year uh, we looked at well how do we launch this in May look at how do we support our employees through June virtually, which was very different to what we've done before. And we provided a hamper for them, um, which actually provided not only your book, uh, but also a number of the key tips that were provided in the webinars were also provided into the hamper. So things like uh, tea, peppermint tea, uh, considerations of candles for mindfulness. Um, but we also did provide a few little naughty things um, to you know provide people a bit of balance. So a bit of chocolate and things like that. Um, and then post that after we had provided that to our employee workforce, we then launched your 28 day program, which enabled yeah. them to have that opportunity to have a, a packaged solution, a journey into uh, the moment of then reading the book. And if not them, it may have been their partner that read the book. And then they moved into the 28 day program and had the opportunity to partake in that. Yeah, thanks, Kat. Um, I, for those of you that don't know, my book is called Eat, Drink and Still Shrink. It's one of my books. Um, so um, you know that I don't mind a little bit of naughtiness because there is a way to wellness without hassle. 
So Kat, I just wanted to read um, to everybody here today a message that I got from one of your employees. And it said, Michelle, I thought I could boost my well-being by watching these webinars, but I had no idea how much watching my food, sugar intake affected my sleep, my energy, and had a direct knock-on effect to if I exercised the next day, not to mention my moods. So my thank you comes not only from me, but from my wife. <laughs> So I just want to take a moment and speak on the importance of mental health, because that is something incredibly dear to me and passionate to me. I dedicate the proceeds of my books and some of my speaking engagements to Deakin, Food, Deakin University, the Food and Mood Center, headed up by Felice Jacka, because this gives me the ability to be talking on a world stage about evidence-based medicine, not white witchcraft, not hokey poke stuff, not something you read off a blog, but real evidence-based stuff on how we can minimize the risk factors with anxiety, depression, and mood disorders. Now, the space of mental health is multifactorial, and it's silent, and it's scary, and it affects our productivity, our energy, the ability to connect with one another. But what we know to be true is what we eat has a direct knock-on effect to our sleep, to our exercise, and connection, the pillars of well-being. What we know true to be true in the SMILES trial out of Deakin University is eating well and eating whole real foods will underpin or minimize the risk factors. And that, my friends, even if it's a small percentage, means we're winning with our fork. Um, Kat, Kat, there's some other things that I'd like you to share with the audience. And that's about um, what were the outcomes and what was the feedback that you collected? Thanks, Michelle. Um, very much uh, the feedback that we were provided was around the ability to, number one, connect with their peers. Um, you know, there was something to really connect on. Um, secondly, you know, this was right in the middle of the environment of, of working from home. So we had 100% of our workforce working from home, most of which had, you know, children homeschooling at home, partners under the same roof, um, animals under the same roof, um, which requires a very different level of patience, um, also a very different different level of resilience and mood um, and energy. So the feedback we had was even if they personally didn't resonate or want to go through, you know, this program or, or connect with this, they learned so much for their family as well. So many yeah. people have provided us feedback on how it's supported their family to move through uh, COVID and the new environment and figuring out how to operate in that, uh, particularly because, you know, this is the first moment in, I think, globally, everyone is experiencing a very similar uh, situation where they are all having to cope in this very new environment, which is uncertain. So the fact that there's the uncertainty, how do you bring back the ability to operate in this environment and manage your moods, manage your sleep, manage your immunity um, to be able to continue to work effectively as well? So very much feedback around that. And of course, the fact that this was so different, so simple, it was easily implemented. Um, it wasn't something we have looked at before, um, but we're able to augment it with what we already had in place place in terms of webinars and things like that. Yeah, thanks, Kat. I, I, I often think um, that so many corporations aren't jumping into this space of corporate well-being because they think that it's expensive. They think it's taxing on their human resources. And perhaps there are some programs like that. I don't believe in that. Uh, again, one of the um, webinars earlier today was like, keep it simple, keep it really simple. Come down to some basic messages and give people real doable advice. So I always end every presentation that I do with real doable advice because I remember when I worked at Microsoft hearing all these great speakers and there was like, oh, I love that messaging, but give me five action steps that I can do you know, as a real person who has three kids, a dumb dog, a messy house, like give me something I can actually do and take on today. So that's where our philosophy comes from um, in building all of our work that we do from my books to my webinars. But um, in closing, Lawrence, you mentioned again. <laughs> you you noticed me up here. <laughs> 
there is a big difference between knowing and doing. And, you know, it's all about the doing. And the doing doesn't have to be serious and it doesn't have to be hard. Um, it should be humorous. It should be fun. It should be connecting and energizing. Um, it's okay also to include a little bit of co coffee and wine in your well-being strategy. Maybe not at the same time, but, hey, whatever floats your boat. But thank yeah. you, Lawrence, for having Kat and I today. And Kat, thank you. Michelle, Kat, thank you so much. That was really inspiring. Thank you for